What's up everyone? Welcome to Trailer Spot. And today we will be talking about the best upcoming movies. After penning the script for the first two movies in the franchise, Kelly Marcel has signed on to write and direct Venom 3. The first two movies helped launch Sony Spider-Man Universe, the studio's interconnected group of films, existing separate from the Marvel Cinematic Universe, utilizing characters tied to the web-slinger. Alongside Tom Hardy's Venom, the sole released outing for the SSU is that of Jared Leto's Morbius, which hit theaters this past spring to critical disdain and underwhelming box office numbers. Hardy's most recent effort, Venom Let There Be Carnage, saw the titular extraterrestrial being and Eddie Brock face off against Woody Harrelson's serial killer, Cletus Cassidy, and his own symbiote, Carnage, which he received from ingesting some of Eddie's blood. Helmed by Lord of the Rings vet Andy Serkis, the sequel was generally perceived to be an improvement over its predecessor and was a box office success when stacked against the pandemic, grossing over $507 million against its $110 million production budget. Venom Let There Be Carnage left audiences with two major cliffhangers for the character as he went on the run from the law and found himself transported to another universe. Though with the Spider-Man No Way Home mid credit scene bringing him back to his home universe, audiences are curious to see what's next for the character. Deadline has brought word that Venom 3 has gotten a major update, with Kelly Marcel signing on to write and direct the Tom Hardy sequel. Marcel is also attached to produce the film with Hardy, Avi Arad, Matt Tolmach, Amy Pascal, and Hutch Parker. Captain America New World Order producer Nate Moore teases an upcoming face-off between Sam Wilson and Thunderbolt Ross. As Phase 4 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe comes to a close with the release of Black Panther Wakanda Forever on November 11, Marvel will move further into its multiverse saga. One of the highly anticipated planned releases is Captain America New World Order which stars Anthony Mackie in his first feature-length project as the new Captain America. The fourth Captain America film is expected to begin filming in the spring of 2023 and is scheduled to be released on May 3rd, 2024. Captain America New World Order will pick up after the Falcon and the Winter Soldier and follow Sam Wilson as he adjusts to his new role as Captain America. While the film is still in pre-production, it was announced that Danny Ramirez and Carl Lumbly would be reprising their roles from the limited series as Joaquin Torres and Isaiah Bradley, respectively. They will be joined by Tim Blake Nelson playing the leader, Shira Haas playing Sabra, and Harrison Ford playing General Thunderbolt Ross, replacing the late William Hurt. Ford's addition to the MCU is amazing for the franchise, and now Moore gives one of the first glimpses at his role in Captain America New World Order. It seems that Thunderbolt Ross may cause some trouble for the new Captain America. In a recent interview with Collider, Moore teases conflict between the General and Sam Wilson, reminding everyone that Ross threw Sam in prison at the end of Captain America Civil War. Longtime MCU fans and Marvel Comics readers won't be surprised by Ross clashing with Sam in the next Captain America movie. The General first appeared as the antagonist in 2008's The Incredible Hulk and was last seen in the MCU chasing Natasha Romanoff at the beginning of Black Widow in 2021. In the comics, Ross becomes the Red Hulk so that he can finally match the Hulk in strength and wits. What makes Ross's inclusion in Captain America New World Order so interesting is that Nelson's the leader who has experience experimenting with gamma radiation was already announced as the villain. This could mean that Captain America New World Order will include Red Hulk's origin story and Captain America will find himself fending off two villains. Of course, Red Hulk has not yet been officially confirmed by Marvel. It's possible that Thunderbolt Ross's fight with Sam in Captain America New World Order is still related to the General's work in Civil War, and that Sam will again have to overcome being an unsanctioned superhero. Still, Ford is expected to reprise the role for Thunderbolts, so Red Hulk's arrival seems imminent. 
Marvel fans will need to keep an eye out for more news as the MCU's multiverse saga progresses. Marvel Studios casts Yahya Abdul-Mantin II as the lead of Wonder Man, a new Disney Plus series. The Marvel Cinematic Universe has expanded significantly over the last few years thanks to Disney's streaming service. On top of giving supporting characters a chance to lead solo projects, Marvel Studios has also used Disney Plus to give new heroes like Moon Knight, Miss Marvel, and She-Hulk solo shows from the beginning. It is well known that there are plans for many other MCU Disney Plus shows focused on yet to be introduced heroes, such as Nova. The character of Simon Williams has nearly appeared in the Marvel Cinematic Universe several times before. It was reported earlier this year that Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings director, Destin Daniel Cretton, was developing a Wonder Man series that would bring him to the franchise. Since the show's development became known, it has been revealed that the series could be a Hollywood satire. The idea gained more credence following reports that Ben Kingsley would return as Trevor Slattery in Wonder Man. As shared by Deadline, Marvel Studios has now cast Aquaman star Yahya Abdul-Mantin II to play Wonder Man in the upcoming MCU series. Abdul-Mantin II joins the MCU after several DC roles, including Dr. Manhattan in HBO's Watchmen and multiple appearances as Black Manta in the Aquaman franchise. Ahead of Black Panther Wakanda Forever's release, producer Nate Moore confirms that Black Panther 3 ideas have already been discussed. After being introduced to the Marvel Cinematic Universe in Captain America Civil War, T'Challa returned for a solo film, 2018's Black Panther, which found Chadwick Boseman's character returning to Wakanda to assume the throne following his father's death, but is challenged by his cousin, Eric Killmonger. In addition to its cultural significance, Black Panther grossed over $1 billion at the box office and was the first superhero film to receive a Best Picture nomination at the Oscars. Following a long and private battle with colon cancer, Bozeman passed away in August 2020, and the tragic news came as a massive shock to the world. As a result, returning Black Panther director Ryan Coogler and his co-writer Joe Robert Cole we worked the sequel to lay T'Challa to rest in the MCU and shift its focus to the women of Wakanda, including Shuri, Nakia, Okoy, and Ramonda, as they protect the nation from invading forces led by Namor, the king of Tolokan. Black Panther Wakanda Forever early reactions have been united in their praise of the moving Marvel sequel. Now with two weeks to go until the sequel debuts in theaters, one of the producers behind Wakanda Forever is addressing the possibility of a third installment. In an interview with Collider, Moore reveals that Black Panther 3 ideas have already been discussed, but they are waiting to see how audiences receive Wakanda Forever before making a final decision. Henry Cavill will not return as Geralt of Rivia for The Witcher Season 4. And such shocking news suggests that Cavill's future as Superman in the DCEU is even more promising than imagined. Taking many by surprise, Netflix announced that Liam Hemsworth will replace Henry Cavill as Geralt for The Witcher Season 4. Cavill has already wrapped The Witcher Season 3, and given how the actor returned to the role of Superman in Black Adam five years after Justice League, the Witcher's surprising change of lead may have to do something with Superman and the DCEU. Up until this point, Henry Cavill never had to conciliate the DCEU's Superman and The Witcher's Geralt of Rivia. Cavill was cast as Geralt in 2018, almost a year after Justice League hit the theaters. From then on, Cavill's future as Superman in the DCEU became a question mark. Five years after Justice League, Cavill had already starred in two The Witcher seasons, but had yet to reprise his role as Superman. Now, the news that Henry Cavill will be replaced by Liam Hemsworth as The Witcher's Geralt comes just a week after Black Adam's post credit scene brought Cavill back as Superman. After Henry Cavill teased that Black Adam's post credit scene is just the beginning of his return via Instagram, 
The Geralt of Rivia recast suggests that Cavill's schedule will be packed with Superman commitments. In November 2021, Henry Cavill confirmed that he was on board with The Witcher's seven season plan, which makes the Geralt's recast even more shocking. Cavill is a fan of The Witcher games and had said many times how much he enjoyed playing Geralt. And while not many people had originally fancast the Superman actor as Geralt, Cavill's portrayal of Geralt was praised by game players, book readers, and casual audiences alike. Henry Cavill's Geralt was the face of Netflix's The Witcher, a show that has already led to an animated spin-off movie, Nightmare of the Wolf, and a live-action spin-off series, Blood Origin. As such, for Henry Cavill to have exited The Witcher after just three seasons, the actor may have been offered a promising future as Superman. Anya Taylor-Joy confirms that filming has wrapped on Mad Max Fury Road prequel, Furiosa. Charlize Theron first brought post-apocalyptic warrior, Furiosa, to life in 2015's blockbuster Mad Max franchise revival. But for the Furiosa prequel, director George Miller has brought aboard Queen's Gambit star, Taylor Joy, to replace Theron. Miller's return to the Mad Max universe with 2015's Fury Road was of course a major surprise itself, given that the last Mad Max movie before it came out way back in 1985. But Miller showed that he still had the goods when it came to furious post-apocalyptic action filmmaking, as Fury Road treated audiences to a chase film to end all chase films. But as spectacular as the road-warring action was in Fury Road, the movie's most enduringly iconic element is arguably the very character of Furiosa, the war rig driver with the prosthetic arm, whose act of rebellion against crazed mutant overlord, Immortan Joe, kicks off the movie's wasteland-spanning story. Audiences couldn't be more excited at the prospect of returning to the wastelands again, with Miller bringing back Furiosa for another adventure. Work has indeed been proceeding on the movie for months, and now star Taylor Joy has confirmed that filming on Furiosa has wrapped. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next video.